Gary Thomas in his book, Sacred Pathways, he is talking about many different ways that people connect and, and can serve God um, and, and grow in relationship with him. And one of those ways is through activism, being an activist, uh, striving to, to bring justice and equality, tr striving to, to do what is right at, at no, really no matter what the cost, and even if that means confrontation. And so in the book, Gary Thomas talks about uh, a story about this guy who comes to him and has actually gone to many of the different pastors in his area, and he is he's deeply concerned about this PG movie. It's PG, and many families are bringing to bring their kids to this movie, and and yet this man has seen he he, he sees that there's a f many different words that are used that he doesn't agree with. There's different parts of this movie, even though it's PG, he says, this is not what our kids should be watching. And so this man is on a petition. He's on a drive to try to, to, to talk to each pastor and, and convince them to say, we should not be encouraging our families to watch this particular movie. Now, Gary admits, he's like, ah, I was a little turned off by that, right? He came pretty strong. It didn't seem like that big of a, a big deal. And but then the man, he said, he shared this verse. It's Romans 12, verse 9. He says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Gary says that when this man shared this verse, it, it hit him. And as I was reading through that chapter, it struck me too that he said, How often do I really hate what is evil? Like more often than not, I'm probably tolerant of what is evil. I, I look to, to things in this world and, and just kind of blow it off and be like, mm, don't think that's the best, but, you know, whatever. But here Paul is, is writing and, and he says, we need to hate what is evil. We need to hate the sin in our own lives. We need to hate the sin in this world. And I think I was just struck by that because I don't know that I am always that actively against what's wrong in my own life or what's wrong in this world. Now, this does not mean that we should go and be judgmental about everyone. This doesn't mean we go and condemn everyone. We still have to love our neighbor and love our enemy. And, and so this isn't to be taken to such an extreme where we're actually pushing people away from us. But, but at least for me, when I think internally about myself and see the brokenness within myself, I wonder how often I actually hate my own sin. I think that's the part that really sticks with me that, I don't know, I shrug it off sometimes. I say it's no big deal. It was a mistake. It, but but I should, I should really cling to what is good and hate what is evil. Now, knowing this, too, is also a great comfort of then knowing that, that even though my sin is terrible and that God looks at me and, and, and he hates the sin that was in, is within me, he still loves me. And that while I was a sinner, Christ died for me. A little while ago, we studied the book of James at church, and in and, and James, uh, he, he at one point calls the people an adulterous people. Right? He says, you adulterous people, because you are no longer serving God. You are serving yourself. You, are, you have abandoned this relationship with God. Now, those are harsh words, and, and maybe we skim over that sometimes, but if I were to think about my own relationship with my wife, I would hate myself if, if I just, or I would hate the fact that I, I, I committed adultery, if that were the case. And yet I should look with the same anger and hatred at myself for doing that to God. Now, it also doesn't mean that I stay there. Because just a few verses later, James says, but he gives us more grace. And so once again, God pours his grace over us that even though we were a sinner, that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And, and, so, and so we can hate our sin. 
we can give it to God and accept his forgiveness and his grace and just know that that even though we have made all of these mistakes, he still loves us. He still cares for us. He still holds us in his hands and that he died on the cross to save us from those very sins. What good news is that? Amen.